Hi guys, so ahead of Boris Johnson's visit to Belfast on Monday, a Northern Ireland newspaper published something that is interesting. So Boris Johnson wrote, okay, it's claimed that he wrote, a 2,200 word essay for the Belfast Telegraph, which thankfully is not behind a paywall, or wasn't when I was making this video. The reason I'm sceptical that Johnson wrote it himself was due to the language used and the knowledge of things Johnson probably is not familiar with. So it's likely to upset pretty much everyone, there is some good mixed in with the bad. So I do recommend you read it, as it isn't very long, but I want to point out some of the good stuff and some of the things I have a problem with. He starts out by talking about the Good Friday Agreement and the peace process. He points to this as a catalyst for Northern Ireland's economic success, and he gives a few examples. He reinforces the point on a number of occasions of how the UK government backs the Good Friday Agreement and is a guarantor. The language here is very positive, but it's clear that it was written by somebody with a deeper knowledge of Northern Ireland than Johnson possesses. He then talks about a border poll. Now this is interesting as it's something that successive British governments have attempted to avoid. Yes, he says that along with the Labour Party, his government would campaign for the Union. Now this may upset some people on the island of Ireland, as the UK government is expected to be impartial when a border poll is held. However, I think the bigger issue here is not the neutrality of Johnson or lack of, but the acknowledgement of a future border poll at all. Now this somewhat dovetails into the next section where he compliments Sinn Féin on their victory and pays tribute to the Moderate Alliance Party. Two key points here are, one, Johnson says that the election was on bread and butter issues. This is a clear rebuttal of the DUP position. And two, he says, and I quote, so it is time for all of the local parties to get back to Stormont, elect a speaker, create an executive, get back to work. This again undermines the hardliner DUP and TUV position of no executive until the protocol goes. Then we get to the protocol. He continues the old trope of blaming the EU here. He explains that when it was written it was before the pandemic and before the war in Ukraine. Now this is a strange argument on the surface, however it does replicate something Lord Frost has been saying for some time, how the protocol and the withdrawal agreement were agreed before the TCA or the trade agreement with the European Union, and what came after makes something that came before unworkable. The problem with this argument is that issues like medicine were resolved within the framework of the protocol. It did require both sides sitting down and working through the detail, but neither the protocol needed scrapping or Article 16 required invoking. However, the core takeaway from this essay is that Johnson, if he's been honest here, which we must all take with a huge pinch of salt, is, and I quote, It is because of these complexities that the protocol exists. It is why the protocol was agreed in good faith. And it is why those who want to scrap the protocol rather than seek changes are focused on the wrong thing. Not full-throated support for the protocol, but if he's been honest here, then I don't think I could ask for much more. The protocol will not be scrapped. The DUP will be asked, or perhaps forced in some way, to get into government and do their jobs. If Johnson pulls this off, then he'll likely get a bit of a boost. The EU will be happy, Ireland will be relieved, and the DUP will be upset. But the problem here is that Brexit is long term, and we can expect further bumps in the road in the near future. Let me know in the comment section guys what you think, as always your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.